Now in this last part of the question, we're told that originally the particle was released from rest. So let's just mark in the particle here, say. There's our particle, it was released from rest. So we'll just put that in as zero meters per second. And then after half a second, let's say it's gone up to this point here. Let's spark in t equals 0 0.5 of a second. After half a second, it's gained speed up through here. And at this point, the string is cut. So we don't have any tension in the string at all. So let's just remove that tension. So what happens now is that the particle is catapulted, if you like, further up the plane. It's already got a speed at this point. Let's mark in that speed upwards there as V. So it's catapulted further up this plane to a point, say here, where it comes to instantaneous rest, zero meters per second. What we've got to find then is the extra time that it takes to go from here to where it comes to instantaneous rest. So to do this, we've got to think of this in two parts. We've got to think of this first stage here. Let's call it A to B. And then we'll consider the stage B to C. So when we consider a to B first of all. Let's just mark this in so it helps the reader understand where we're going. If we consider A to B, we've got to do a Suvat based equation. So we take the direction of motion up the plane as positive and think about our variables S, U, V, A and T. So what is S from here to here? Well, we don't know it. So We'll put a question mark there. U, the initial velocity, well that was zero. V, the final velocity, well that's the thing we want to find here first of all. So we need to find that one. Okay, we'll put a question mark there. The acceleration, well the acceleration over this stretch was 1.4 meters per second per second. So I'll just write in 1.4 there. And the time it took to go from here to here was half a second, so 0.5. So what kind of equation then could we use that leaves out s? Well it's going to be v equals u plus at. And if we substitute our values in here, we've got v is the thing we're trying to find, so it's going to be equal to u, which was 0, plus the acceleration, 1.4, multiplied by the time 0.5. And that gives us an exact value for V. Turns out that V then is equal to 0.7 meters per second. So that's the first stage of the problem done. We've now established this speed that it reaches just when the string is cut. Now what we're going to need to do now to work out the time taken to go over this section, B to C, is another SUVAT based equation. But what we don't have is the acceleration over this stretch. And so let's just get that by considering the particle somewhere in between B and C. And what we need to do is mark on the forces that we've got. And we've got the weight here, 0.3 g newtons. Let's just mark that in, 0.3 g newtons. We've also got the friction acting down the plane. It's going to be half r, where r is the normal contact force. So that will be just r newtons. We worked out what R was in an earlier part of the question. R turned out to be 0.24 G. So we can substitute that in later. We got the coefficient of friction was a half and multiply that with R gives us the frictional force, mu R, half R. Okay, so that's gonna be measured in Newtons. There's no tension because the string has been cut. So we've got a dotted line down there, this angle is alpha. 
So in order to get the acceleration then over this stretch here, let's just mark it in as A. Then we've got to resolve up the plane. And so if we resolve up the plane in the direction of motion, taking that as positive, what we've got then is minus a half r because that's our frictional force but it's acting in the opposite sense to up the plane. And we've also got to take into account the component of the weight that acts down the plane. That's going to be 0.3g sine alpha because it excludes this angle alpha here, sine, okay? And it's minus because it opposes the positive direction, minus 0.3g sine alpha. R doesn't come into play at all because it's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving, parallel to the plane. So this is our resultant force. And this resultant force equals the mass, which is 0.3 kilograms, times the acceleration A. Now, as I said earlier, we know what R is. It's 0.24g. We've got, therefore, minus a half multiplied by R, which is 0.24g. Then we have minus 0.3g times the sine of alpha. Sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 3 over 5, 3 fifths. And that equals 0.3 times the acceleration. Now, if we work out what minus a half of 0.24g is, that's going to be minus 0.12g. And if we take away 0.3g times 3 fifths, we end up with minus 0.3g equals the 0.3a here. You can cancel out the 0.3s and you end up with that acceleration a equaling minus g. Negative as you would expect because it's decelerating. So now that we've got a at minus g meters per second per second, we can then build up a SUVAD equation for this section b to c. So if we say consider the section B to C now, then putting down our variables are S, U, V, A and T. What have we got? Well, we don't know S again, but we do know U. It was the speed that it launched off here with, the V that we discovered here, 0 0.7. And we better set up a positive sense, by the way, that will be up the plane, so this will still be 0 0.7. V, the final velocity, well that's going to be zero when it comes to instantaneous rest here. The acceleration, well because up the plane is positive, then the acceleration is minus g. I'm going to write it in as minus 9.8 now. And we want to know what this extra time is that it takes to go from here to here. So what equation would we use for this one? Well, again, it's going to be V equals U plus AT, the one that leaves out S, the displacement. So if we fill this in with our values, we've got for V, 0, U is 0 0.7, and then we've got plus A, which is going to be plus minus 9.8. So I'm going to write that as minus 9.8 multiplied by T. And just rearranging this, if we add 9.8t to both sides, we've got 9.8t equals 0 0.7. And if we divide now both sides by 9.8, you've got t equals 0 0.7 divided by 9.8, I should say. And what you get here is 0 0.07142 and so on. And if we were to round this, say, to two significant figures, then it would be 0.071 seconds to two significant figures, 2SF. Okay, so a bit cramped, but uh, hopefully you've got the idea of what I'm trying to put across. Okay, 